This is our call to worship. Psalm 40, 1 through 4. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Hey everyone, let's stand together and sing. And as we do, know that wherever we're coming from into this room, that we have confidence to approach the throne of God because of Christ. So let's lift our voices and sing together. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea. A great high priest whose name is love, who ever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. Lord, we uh, come to you today, and we come expecting, Father, um, that you are a God who not only makes promises, but a God who fills those promises. And so we come, Father, with our heart's desires before you today, and our hungers and our thirsts and our longings, our joys, our sadness, the wholeness of who we are, we bring it to you right now. And we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, in this place, that you have promised that when we open up your word, when we give our heart to your word, that your word goes forth with a purpose. And that purpose, um, Lord, will be accomplished. And we pray that, Lord, we would not only witness that today, you'd let us see that today, but also give our hearts to that today. So uh, we praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Hey, you guys can have a seat. Wow, my name is Randy. I am the uh, pastor here at Granny White. And... Uh, Today, I am the lounge uh, comedian, so hey. No, for those of you that are on video and you've not been to our service, it's kind of like a coffee shop, and uh, everybody has a mask on, so it's a little weird. But uh, for us here, let's work hard, because um, what we're about to do is dive into the Word, and if you're just there passively, um, then uh, it's going to be really hard for us to experience this together, so... 
feel free to let your heart jump into this. Take notes. We're going to be jumping around Scripture a lot this morning um, with the goal of encouraging you and giving you tools by which to maybe go and study this even more after today's service. And we've been talking about the priesthood of the believers and talking about what does that really mean. When I was in college, um, this was right after I'd become a Christian and I was trying to learn how to live a sober life. And I realized that when you're sober, you have all this energy that uh, you didn't have before. And I was a little bored, so I started doing really unusual, crazy stuff. And one of the things that I did was um, something I'd never done before was I started riding bulls and rodeos. And uh, I know it's crazy, isn't it? I saw it on TV and I thought, man, that... That'd be amazing. So I'm going to go do that. And I show up at my first rodeo and uh, I'm going, you know, back behind, you know, where all the livestock are. And this, I meet this really grizzled looking old cowboy. His skin is leather. You know, it's just something out of an old Western. And he looks at me and he, he kind of smiles and he goes, first time. I'm like, dude, how could you tell? Like, I look like you. Okay, I'm not as old as you and I'm not as grizzled, but how can you tell? He goes, it's your gear. It's too clean. And then he began to tell me, he says, see, what you don't understand is when you go into that arena with those monsters, they're going to tear up everything you have. And as you start doing this, you're going to start taping stuff together, sewing stuff back together, wiring stuff together. And any guy that you've seen on this circuit for a season Everything he has is beat up, torn up, wore down, and just stitched and held together. Your gear's too new. If you're going to get in the arena, your gear is going to get destroyed. And I hate to tell you this, but I'm about to challenge you to get into the arena. But there are going to be things in your life that are going to get destroyed. Things in your life that are going to get beat up, torn up, shredded. It's just going to happen. But not getting into the arena is a denial of who you are. In fact, if you if write this down, Revelations chapter 1, verse 6. It's the last uh, book in the Bible, and it's talking about Jesus, and it says, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. He's talking about Jesus and his work on his cross. He has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father. He has made us to be a new kingdom, and he has made you to be a priest this is what Jesus came to do. Then in chapter 5, verse 10, it says, and they sang a new song saying, you're worthy to take the scroll. And this is talking about Jesus again. And he's worthy to open up the seal. Because you were slain, talking about Jesus, in your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's us. That you may make them to be a kingdom of priests to serve God. And they will reign on the earth. That the whole mission of God from the beginning, Garden of Eden, all the way through the Old Testament, which everything in the Old Testament is pointing to Jesus and the fulfillment of what Jesus did on the cross and the power of the resurrection and the glorification and his return is to create a nation of priests, us. So we started last week talking about, well, what does that mean? Well, last week we talked about, well, if we go back to the very first priest, Adam and Eve, then we see the first thing they were made to be were gardeners. And this week, we're going to go a little forward in the book of Genesis, um, and we're going to talk about a guy named Abram. Now, uh, let me tell you what's happened in Genesis. Uh, creation story, Adam and Eve fell. They were cast out of the garden, and then humanity began to expand all over the earth. And then generations and generations and generations we find the great, 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 great grandson of Adam is a guy named Abram. And this is chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, this is verse 1. And the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country. Let me say that again. God looked at Abram and said, go. Go. Go from your country, go from your people, go from your father's household to the land that I have shown you. And then he says, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse and all people on earth, all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went and as the Lord had told him and 
Lot went with him, which is a whole other story. And Abram, get this, was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. So this is, if you're a scholar of the Old Testament, this is the first step. Well, maybe it's the second step, depending on how serious about your scholarly ways. But this is, this is God's first step in creating a nation by which he was going to re- redeem humankind. In fact, kind of get us back to the Garden of Eden. Because from Abraham, he establishes the nation of Israel. Through Israel comes Jesus, and through Jesus comes the blessing. But he says three things to Abraham as a priest, and he is the author of the Levitical priesthood. So in essence, he is the first priest. He says, go, I'm going to bless you, and then you're going to be a blessing. Go, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing. And those commands are the same for us today. If you want to know what it means to be a priest, to get into the arena, to have all your gear torn up, go, get blessed, and then you're going to be a blessing. So let's talk about this go for a second. Because he said for Abram to go from your country, go from your people, go from your father's house. And we have to understand in this time, uh, this wasn't like I want you to move from Creve Hall, you know, to Ashland City. This was not this kind of a go. This wasn't even a go that you're going to move from Nashville to Seattle. This isn't that kind of a go. This is a go where, where God is asking Abraham not just to change his location, but he's asking Abraham to leave everything that he knew. See, in that time, um, people were herdsmen. So when they would, they would create these packs with their family and their neighbors because there were marauders, barbarians, that would roam the countryside to raid, to kill, to steal. And their protection was in their group. It, their protection was in their, their country identity, their people identity, their family identity. So when God is saying to Abraham, I want you to leave this place where you're safe and I want you to go out there, he's basically saying to Abram, I want you to give up your protection. I want you to give up your identity. I want you to give up your job. I want you to give up your reputation. I want you to give up your wealth. Everything you've spent the last 75 years building right here, I want you to give it up think about this Abraham was he was a wealthy guy we find out later in Genesis how wealthy he is he was comfortable let's just stop in that for a second I mean he spent 75 years building this life that he was comfortable with it was stable it was predictable he was settled and secure so most days when I uh, when I come to my office um, I go to Portland Brew and I know what my order is they know what my order is I know the people that work there they know me it's stable if Portland Brew shut down tomorrow I don't know what I would do like this just throws me out of my comfort zone wait a minute wait where am I going now Starbucks like would I do that like they have an app you know (laughs) I mean we all do this we all have a comfortable rhythm there's a certain level of comfort that you've created in your life. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't create that. I'm just trying to get you in the mindset of what God was asking Abraham to do. He's saying, I'm asking you to give all that up. He knew this place. It was familiar to him. I remember the first day I went to college and I uh, didn't know what any of the building's names were. I didn't know where anything was. And I remember how unfamiliar that feeling was and I felt lost and Uh, I wanted it to feel familiar. When I graduated, it was home. But then when I was leaving home, I was now going to another place that was unfamiliar. It creates stress in us, and it creates pain in us to give up what we've become familiar with and we found comfort in to move in to what isn't comfortable. I mean, I know where all the things I love are at Whole Foods. I could take you straight to them. I just, I love knowing that. I'm guessing you're smiling under your mask, okay? Why would God do this? Why would he do it to you? Because what I want you to begin to see is that this is not unique to Abram. God calls all priests to go. That's us. And I think the reason that God is doing this is he's he's saying, Abram, I'm not calling you to what is comfortable. I'm calling you to me. And the first call of every priest is to him. 
and when and let me put this in language when you go well what does that mean to be called to jesus you know like it means to trust him to actually move in trust toward god and that is a scary thing because let me try to illustrate why it's scary there are things in your life that you have decided you are not going from it just is i mean you know, let's, let's think for a minute about what you consider blessing is. Because we're about to talk about, as a priest, you go, but you're blessed and you're going to be a blessing. What is blessing to you? If we had a big whiteboard up here and I could just get you to shout out, we would probably say all the kind of stuff that, that we consider a blessing. Like having success is a blessing. Like having money is a blessing. You know, having fame, that's got to be a blessing. Or having beauty. Come on, we all desire either something beautiful or to be beautiful, counting crows. But, you know, we, we consider those things a blessing. We, people that have those things, that have money and fame and beauty and status or athletic ability or, you know, artistic ability, we see those people and we go, oh, they're so blessed that we hold them up in our society. I remember I was 10 years old when I first met the hammer. What well, was the last time I met the hammer, too? Uh, this is Hank Aaron. If you don't know Hank Aaron, Hank Aaron uh, is this famous baseball player. He was the first guy to ever beat Babe Ruth's home run uh, record. Just an uh, unbelievable athlete. And I remember his 10 years old running up and shaking his hand and his hand, like it was monstrous. It was just this huge hand and it just engulfed my hand. It was just gone. Like I was a little twig in there. And I was in awe. And I thought, that guy, look at him. Everybody wants to be around him. He's a great athlete. The whole world knows his name. He's got money. He's got, he's got it all. How blessed is that? We could keep going on. We could say, I mean, health is a blessing, right? Friends are a blessing. Family are a blessing. Are these the kind of blessings that Jesus is talking about when he says that we've been blessed so that we can bless? In fact, I think what God is going to say to us this morning, I hope, if I can make it clear, we got to go. We got to go from all this stuff over here that we're convinced is a blessing to move into a place where we're trusting God. Because if I don't go from this, let me give you an example. If I believe that blessing is health and God takes your health away, and in my mind, I've got this box of blessing, and that's to be healthy till I take my last breath. How, how are you going to ever tolerate the struggles that God brings into your life? If I'm holding on to my standard of what it means for God to bless me, how will I ever understand the true nature of blessing? Let me give an example. In your family system, like the family you grew up with, your family taught you what blessing was. They did. They also taught you what curse was. I mean, your family taught you what a blessing in relationships were. And let me tell you what my family taught me about a blessing in a relationship. Relationships that have no problems, that's a blessed relationship. What do you mean? A relationship that never has any hiccups, never has any interruptions, and never has an argument is a blessed relationship. I never saw my parents argue, ever. And we had addictions in our home. We were masters at covering stuff up. It was unbelievable, like a spiritual gift that we had that covered up. But that's the message, is that relationships that have no problems, have no hiccups. But your family also taught you what is blessing about work. I mean, think about it. What did your parents teach you about work? And what did they teach you is, is a blessing of work? Is it work a little, get paid a lot? Or is it work a lot and be known that you're a hard worker? Or what is it? Your family also taught you what's blessing when it comes to money. Some of you grew up in home and they cursed people that had lots of money. And so your blessing is, is that you've learned how to live on little. And that's the blessing. Some of you grew up saying, no, 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 lots of money is the blessing. That's the sign of the blessing of the Lord. That if you've got a lot of stuff, then that means God's favor is on you. Regardless of the fact that Jesus had no place to lay his head, you know. Some of you, well, all of us. Your family taught you about sex and what is blessing in sex. What is blessing for you in sex and your own sexuality? Maybe you grew up in a home where the most blessed thing about your sexuality is that you never think about it and you never experience it. Some of you, it's the other extreme. So in my home, 
We, we had a blessing when it came to emotions. And maybe you can relate to this. And here was, here was the message that was taught me growing up. The most blessed place that you can be emotionally ever is the place of joy. If you're happy. At that, right, oh, that's the sign of blessing. If you had a good day, joyful day. Wow. That right there is the perfect day. In fact, we were so convinced that joy was the only place of blessing that whenever we experienced any other emotion, it was a curse. It wasn't a blessing at all. So when we're angry, that's not a blessing. When we're sad, that's not a blessing. When we're hurt, that's not a blessing. In fact, all these other emotions, which you know that most emotions are not joy, and, but all these other emotions were like swamps that you had to kind of trudge through to get to the island of joy. And if you could get to the island of joy and you could pull out your sword and fight back all these other emotions, you know, suppress anger, never feel sad, always be happy. And man, the church was great at supporting that. If, if I stay on the island of joy, just go with me here. If I never go from my family's understanding of emotions, then you realize that I'm never going to experience trust when God says anger is a good emotion. Oh, wait a minute. You, you're never going to leave the island of your parents' view of sexuality when God says, I invented sex and it is good. If I never leave the island of how I perceive work should be or relationship should be, I'll never trust God enough to go to the foreign land of under, understanding how arguments and relationship are my ways to fight for you. See, if blessing is only prosperity, I'm never going to understand suffering or the power of suffering as a priest. If blessing is only success, then how will I ever, ever, ever understand when Paul said, I, I boast in my weaknesses so that I may know his strength. If blessing is only by getting what I want out there, like, and some of us are like this, that blessing is always around the corner. It's never right here. It's always out there when, 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 or then, 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 or they, they, they. If it's always dependent on something else happening later today or tomorrow, then I never get to leave that and go to the place where God says, no, blessings right here, right now with me. And if we had all day, we could talk about how do we step into that. But I want us to keep going because the promises that God made to Abraham was, I'm going to give you a nation, I'm going to give you a name, and I'm going to give you wealth, which sounds contrary to what I just said. But look at, write this down, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. The writer of Hebrews gives us a little deeper picture about Abraham. It says, by faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him, to the same promise. For he, and he's talking about Abraham, for he was looking to the city with foundations whose architect and builder was God. So what he's doing is that he's painting a picture for us is that the promises that were made to Abraham were not fulfilled in Abraham's life. And Abraham knew that. He was looking to the horizon, to the blessing that God promised him. And what was that? Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. If you haven't read this, you need to write that down because this is powerful because it says the promises that were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say and to his seeds, meaning many people, but unto your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. In verse 29 of chapter 3, it says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. In other words, all the promises that God made to Abraham were going to be fulfilled in Christ. That Christ came to fulfill the promise to make a new nation, to give us a new name, to give us a new understanding of wealth. See... Let's try to run into this because now, now we're talking about we're blessed. We're blessed people. As priests, it is the mark of who we are. We are blessed people. That when Christ went to the cross, he took all our sins to the cross and he washed us clean. If you can imagine a cup, he cleaned out the cup. But he didn't clean out the cup to leave the cup unfulfilled. At the resurrection, he filled up the cup. If we go to Ephesians chapter 1, I told you we're dancing around a lot of places. This is verse 3. 
It says, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. You have every spiritual blessing there is. Through Christ. The promise to Abraham, fulfilled in Christ, and then fulfilled in you. That you've been given every spiritual blessing in Christ. Then the rest of the chapter starts to list those. You've been chosen. That's a blessing. You've been made holy. That is a blessing. You've been made blameless. That is a blessing. You are loved by God, the creator of the universe, the one who names the stars. That is blessing. You have been adopted. You are no longer an orphan. You're a part of the family. That's a blessing. You're an object of his pleasure. He does these things because you are his pleasure. We are redeemed. We are forgiven. And if that's not enough, it says then he lavishes. Like I love that word, lavish. Use that in a sentence this week. Lavish. He lavished what on us? Grace, wisdom, and understanding. So I want you to imagine that you wake up on Christmas morning and you go and you look and underneath the Christmas tree are just stacks and stacks and stacks of presents. And they're beautiful and the lights are, you know, flickering and music's playing. And you and your siblings are getting ready to tear into those packages and your parents stop you and say, no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just stop and admire the beauty of those packages. Isn't that great? Look, there's one with red wrapping paper and a gold bow. And here's what we're going to do. We're, we're not going to unwrap any of these packages. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just going to leave them right there. And every morning is going to be like Christmas. Every morning you get up and we're all going to stand here and admire all the gifts that are under the tree. But we're never going to open them. Sadly, that's the church. That's us. Because think about what it would be like for you to take all the fear that's been created during the season of corona and all the stuff that's happening in the streets of our cities and take all that fear and bring it to the fact that you are profoundly loved. And that instead of meditating on fear, you're meditating on love, that you are loved. And it even says in scripture, if you could grasp how much he loves you, it would fill you up with the very fullness of God. What would it be like for us as priests to take that kind of gear into life and wear it out like in that rodeo. Just beat it up, wear it down, tape it back together and get back out into the arena. You know, for us to do that, we have to understand our purpose. So I'm going to use a movie illustration here that's been so overused uh, just to create grief in some of your hearts. Uh, there was a movie that was created that was it was brave what was it it was brave something it had this guy named william wallace in it and uh you remember at the end of braveheart he's in prison and somebody wants to give him you know some painkiller and he says no he's and then he makes that famous quote every man dies but not every man fully lives and it kind of wrapped up the whole movie because you realize from the moment he picked up that first sword, he understood his purpose. My purpose is to fight for freedom. Freedom. In fact, I think it was the last word he screamed out, freedom. And the reason he screamed out at the very end, because it was his purpose when he picked up the sword. It was his purpose when he went into battle. It was his purpose when he was cheering on his men. It was his purpose when he was standing around the campfires with all his guys. It was his purpose when he was talking to all the lords and tried to stir them to do their lord stuff. It was the purpose even at his death. The last words was freedom. Meaning that if I understand my purpose and I understand that God has given me every spiritual blessing to fulfill that purpose for his glory on this planet, then I got to wear that stuff out. I got to wear it out. And when I start to wear it out, when I start to understand the depth in which I am blessed, when I start to get into the nitty gritty of the stories inside my heart that says you're not blessed, when I pull out the swords and I wage war on the shame in my own heart and the storylines in my past and my family history that tells me I'm not those things and God says these are your things because I'm pulling out the sword so that I can live in the fact that I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. 
because the purpose of my life now is to embrace that and then go bless. Did you get that? The purpose of our lives are to be priests. That's what he rescued us for. It's what he called us to. And what is the purpose of a priest? To know that you are blessed and then take that blessing and go bless. See, I would just say to you that if your life is not about blessing other people, you don't understand that you're blessed. You don't. It's just a pure fact that if you don't look at your stuff and go, how can this stuff bless people? You don't know that you're blessed. If you don't look at your words and go, how are my words blessing people? Then you have forgotten that you are blessed. If what's coming out of this is curses, it's because what's going inside of here is curses. That's what scripture teaches us. I have to do war with this so that I can use this. Are you with me? If the spiritual gifts that God has given you are not getting worn out because you're going into an arena with monsters, it's probably because you don't know that you have spiritual gifts. Do you know the gifts the Holy Spirit has given you? The reason why you're an important part of this community, even during COVID, God is knitting together a tapestry of gifts. What I'm doing right now, and I got to tell you, I hate this. I hate the cameras. I hate the lights. I hate all of it because it appears that there's a show going on here. And there is not a show going on. I'm just using my gifts, one gift in the body of Christ, to try to bless you. But you should be doing the same thing in your life. What about your time? When you understand that Jesus has given you your time, do you realize that your time now becomes a gift? Have you ever been with somebody who just lingers just a little longer just to hear how you're doing and they always just seem to have time just to share how important you are with them what a blessing have you ever thought that the dreams that you have are from the lord as blessings and that those dreams now are blessings to other people or even your heart i mean i I wish we had time this morning i'm about to end but in second corinthians chapter nine you can go read this where God challenges you to be a blessing to other people. He actually challenges you to empty your pockets because it says that the God who, who blesses you will, abble- will bless you so abundantly that you can't outgive your gifts to other people. It's a great story. What a challenge. And I got to tell you, community, you're never going to understand what I'm talking about until you do it. In fact, if you don't understand that you're blessed, then go bless somebody. First Peter chapter 1, it talks about that, that goodness always comes before knowledge. For some of us, we have to just go by faith and begin to use the gifts that we know we have, but we don't feel that we have, to bless other people so that we can begin to understand how much we're blessed. Some can invert it. So I'm, let me close. We, I've, I've got a sword in my house. And it's actually an amazing sword. Uh, I haven't had it for very long. Um, Some people would even say it's not my sword. But it's been passed down from person to person to person. And it's really cool. It's only about this long. And it's got a button at the end that when you press it, it lights up. And it starts making noise like... And it's really this like weird looking Jedi sword. And the way it found its way to my house is that um, the other day, my three-year-old grandson was playing at our house, and there are some kids on our street that are much older who saw him and came over and started playing with him. And one of them is Luca Davis, who some of you know. You know, Jasmine, who runs Kid Town here, it was her son. And they're playing with him. Now, let's think about this. Older kids coming to play with a three-year-old. They're giving their time, they're giving their attention, they're giving their words, they're giving their kindness. They didn't have to do this. And before he left Luca's house, he goes, stop for a second, I got something for you. And he reached into his collection of swords and he goes, this is for you, his first sword. And he comes home and he just wants to hit me with it. It's, I don't know, it's a crazy thing, all right? Guys, when a little boy can do that, Come on, community. Community, Even little children know that their lives, when they bless other people, it blesses them.
But we know better. We know we bless because we are blessed. And when we live out of that, there is freedom. And I got to tell you, I, I don't even care if you, if you came to know Jesus yesterday. All those blessings we list are yours. You may not fully understand them, but they're all there. Your pockets are full. If you want to understand them, start giving them away. Pouring them into other people. I got a lot to say about this. And, you know, you could go to John chapter 13. This is where Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. And it said, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. Jesus knew what he had. And that he had come from God and then he was about to return to God. There was no confusion at all who Jesus was, what he had, where he was going, and where he had been. And how did he express that knowledge that he was blessed? He got on his knees and he washed the feet of his disciples. That's the holy expression of being blessed. So community, let's go. Let's know that we're blessed. And especially during this time, let's be a blessing to the people that God brings into our lives and the people God puts in our heart to seek out. And watch God return that back to you and refill your pockets every time you empty them. Let me pray. Father, we thank you for your word. And we now pray, Father, that um, you would take what has been spoken, take what we've read, and Lord, Holy Spirit, would you take it and fan it into the flames of those that are sitting here? through, Lord, conviction of sin and maybe ways that they have not gone, ways that they have belittled their blessing or shamed it, or even the ways that they've kept their blessing and not given it. And I just pray, Father, that you'd hear our confession and our need for you to renew our hearts, to come and turn up the volume of you rejoicing over us with singing. I pray for everyone in home churches and at home that are watching this, Father, that that somehow or another spirit, you would transform this from a video into a place where your Holy Spirit works. And the only way that works, Father, is when we bring our hearts to these things. So rescue us from cold, uh, just learning in our heads and let it travel down to our hearts and transform us. And even in radical ways, let us not be afraid of the dreams the Holy Spirit would bring to us right now kind of dreams that fan into the flame the very purpose for who we are. And we're all going to die, but I pray, God, that today we would live and that we would take all these things you've given us and we would wear them out in the arena of living life to the full. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we sing this song, would you take some time and just Reflect and meditate on uh, where has God blessed you? What has he given you? Uh, and if you're not sure, ask him, or what have you given me? Uh, let's just take some minute as we sing this song and claim it and believe it and thank God for it. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Through the sun sets free. Oh, it's free. I'm a child of God, yes I am, in my Father's house, there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am, free at last has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. 
Yes, he died for me Through the sun sets free Oh, it's free indeed I'm a child of God Yes, I am In my Father's house there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. And I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free and deep, and I'm a child of God, yes I am, and in my Father's house there's a place for me, I'm a child of God, yes I am. The sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. And in my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Pray with me. Father, we are grateful that you call us your children. And as we're here as your daughters and sons, we also realize you call us priest. And help us to remember that you called us priest because we are blessed and you've called us to share that blessing. We pray for our city today, Father. We pray for Nashville and for all of those who are hurting, broken, wounded, lonely, lost. They need the blessings that you have bestowed on us. That's why you've called us, to be your hands and feet. And we're grateful that you've blessed us physically, and we were able to use that when the tornado came through to help our friends in North Nashville and East Nashville. But we have so much more to share. It's just the tip of the iceberg. You have given us all spiritual blessings, that we have unlimited access to your grace, your love, your forgiveness, and we can share that with those around us. We can share the story of Jesus and what he's done for us and let them know that they can have that too, that they can have all, all spiritual blessings that you provided. Father, as we go from here and we go out this week, we pray that we would be a blessing to the city, that we would be a light on a hill, that we would share the love of Jesus and the salvation that we have, and the story of the gospel, the good news that can change this city. Father, in Christ's name we pray, amen. Hey, let's stand together as we sing this last song.
and know that we have been blessed so that we can bless and that God has given to us so that we can give and that we have everything we need, every spiritual blessing under heaven he has given us. Because of that, we are free, free to live and free to give and be for the community and the people around us. So let's sing of that freedom, of what Christ has given us. Own of my sorrow and dead in my sin. Lost without hope, with no place to begin. But your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained. And my orphan heart was given a my morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. And oh, your grace, so free, washes over me. You have made me. your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom. So my dad, he called me his friend. When death was arrested, and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me. your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. And our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus rose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over. My life be 
and maybe people in this room that go, I don't feel blessed at all. And it's just really great what you just shared. But I want to encourage you that if there's any encouragement that you have from Christ this morning, that you would go from what is normal for you and walk toward blessing. And that's two things that I would encourage you to do. One, call somebody and tell them and say, encourage me. I need you to bless me. Bless me. And the second, would you go to Ephesians chapter 1 and just pour your heart in there. And keep learning what does it mean for you to be blessed and the things that are listed in Ephesians 1. So two things. Call somebody that's encouraging and a blessing to you and say, bless me. And, uh, and then go to Ephesians 1 and let it be the meditations of your heart daily. For the rest of you that you know, man, this is, resonates with me. I know I'm blessed. I know it. I know it. And it's renewed my heart and encouraged me. Then I want to challenge you that this day does not end before you ask the Lord to allow you to bless somebody today. Just bless somebody and say, Lord, show me how to do it and where to do it so that you can start getting in the the habit of living out what it means for you to be a priest so that this doesn't just turn into a sermon and then the sermon's over and now we gear back up for next week's sermon. But we're really experiencing life transformation in a season where our city needs you to be transformed. You understand that Christ has called us to Nashville. This is our city. This is our time to be a light in a very dark season. So let's do it. Let's grow and say, use me, Lord. And you might be surprised how that blessing grows into a dream and how that dream then becomes a reality. And then we all step back and marvel that it's not just a little boy who gives away swords and his treasured possessions, but it's us too that we share in giving ourselves. Receive the benediction of the Lord. We praise God. He is our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And they have blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us. And Lord, I just pray right now a blessing on this community. That we would live in the reality that before the creation of the world, you moved heaven and earth to come after us. That you would come after us even when we didn't know you. Even when we were warring against you. Even when we denied you even exist, you came. And if you were the God who comes when we don't invite I thank you that there is power now that we are sons and daughters and we do invite. So I pray for those this morning that feel discouraged. Bless them. I pray for those in this room that feel encouraged now. Let them be a blessing. And let this community be a light to this city. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Rainy Sunday.